Hello again, everybody. It's USA Wrestling Weekly. I'm Scott Casper. It is week two of the Olympic Games, and USA Wrestling Weekly continues our coverage from London, England. In the spotlight this week, Team USA's Greco-Roman athletes, along with other stories, sites, and activities from the seat of the British Crown. Now, as I told you last week, wrestling fans, you'd first be treated to Greco-Roman excitement, and Team USA was mixing it up with proven vets and talented young prospects from around the world. We start Sunday, August 5th at dawn bright, the first day of competition and the Americans on the mat, two-time Olympian Spencer Mango at 121 and 21-year-old rising star Ben Provisor at 163 pounds. Mango opened his tournament with promise and a strong 6-1-1-0 win over Egypt's 18-year-old Mohamed Abu Halima. Mango was dominant in all positions and showed his edge and experience on the mat. One of the favorites in the field became Spencer's second round opponent, 2011 world champion Ravshan Bayramov of Azerbaijan. He arrived with his game face intact and an eye on winning the prize. Mango had a game performance as well, but it was the defending world champion Bayramov who scored the key moves on the way to a 4-0-4-0 win over Mango. When Bayramov reached the gold medal finals, Mango was pulled back in into the repejage rounds. Mango's opening match in the repejage was against the talented Russian Mingyan Semenov. In a tight battle, Semenov edged Mango 2-0-1-0. And in the end, Mango finished ninth while Semenov went on to take a bronze medal. Spencer Mango talked to us about his second Olympic experience. I thought I wrestled tough. I came out, you know, and got the got the ball rolling, had a nice win, scored some points, and then uh, you know from there it kind of went downhill. I wrestled two very tough opponents and uh, you know I, I gave them all out there and then today they were just better than me. Well, Ben Provisor's first Olympic performance started against a tough Pan American rival, Alexi Bell of Cuba. Looking good, Bell won the first period 3-0, but the young Wisconsin native Provisor battled back with power and energy. He swept the next two periods by a 1-0 score to take the win in his opening match. The key to Provisor's performance? Well, his defense in the bottom parterre position in the deciding third period. Ben's next opponent was Georgia's 2011 world silver medalist, Zarabu Datun Ashvili. Zarabu's a funky wrestler, which offered some style challenges for Provisor. Datun Ashvili won the opening period by defending in parterre, then hit an arm throw in the second period to win 1-0-6-0. When Datun Ashvili failed to reach the finals, Provisor was not able to enter the repejage rounds. Disappointed, Ben Provisor. Well, you know, I gained pretty much invaluable experience, you know, that was my first Olympic Games, you know, I'm pretty young, so hopefully I have a few more left, and, uh, you know, it was a, it was a great, it was a great experience, and unfortunately I lost to Jordan in the second match, but you know, I came back strong in my first match, and I just need to keep working on my technique, keep working on my conditioning, and just hopefully get better for the next Olympics. While winning the Olympic golds on day one were five-time world champion Hamid Soryan of Iran at 121 pounds and 2011 world champion Roman Vlasov of Russia at 174 pounds. Soryan won Iran's first Greco-Roman Olympic gold in history when he defeated 2011 world champion Ravshan Bayramov in the finals 2-0-1-0. Vlasov won a tough battle over two-time world medalist Arsen Jafalikayan of Armenia winning 1-0-1-0. Jafalikayan is the son of 1980 Olympic champion Levon Jafalikayan and fell just short of matching his father's achievement. Monday, August 6th, and it's already day two for Team USA. Three Americans would see battles on this day. Two-time Olympian and three-time world medalist Tramil Byers would see action at 264 pounds. Byers, the veteran team leader, won a world title in 2002 and boasts three world medals. Byers started things out right, controlling the action and winning his opening match with a 1-0-2-0 decision over Mimmajan Abdulayev of Uzbekistan. His next opponent will be one of the top wrestlers on the planet, 2011 world champion Riza Kalyup of Turkey. Byers, unable to turn Kalyup in the parterre position, lost the first period 1-0, then was pushed out by the strong Turk in the second period dropping the bout. In the semifinals, Kalyup was defeated by 2008 Olympic champion Mijan Lopez of Cuba, eliminating Byers from the competition. The 39-year-old Byers took ninth in the final individual standings. Had a good first match. Uh, the second match uh, didn't work out for me. Uh, fell to Turkey. Uh, young kid, uh, he's world champion last year. He's a fairly, fairly tough guy. Uh, I, I think that uh, the prep 
preparatory work I put in, you know, uh, coming in this competition and all the training is, is, is right in line with what needed to happen. Well, he became an internet and TV sensation when his signature move hit the media. 20-year-old Ellis Coleman, the 132-pound creator of the Flying Squirrel, was also a two-time junior world medalist looking to make an impact at his first senior world-level event. His first opponent proved tough, though, 2011 world bronze medalist Ivo Angolov of Bulgaria. Coleman could not turn Angolov in the parterre position in period one, and Angolov was able to score from his feet to win period two for a 1-0-7-1 victory. When Angolov failed to reach the finals, Coleman could not advance to the wrestlebacks. Ever affable, Ellis Coleman talks about his competition and his Olympic experience. I mean, he felt like any other opponent, definitely okay. beatable. Uh, you know, I wrestled with him in the room before I beat him before. I just, I just, he came out there ready to win, and he came out there with a plan, you know, and I just went out there and wrestled. And, uh, I mean, that's the difference between hoping to win and, and taking a win. While 185-pound Chaz Betts went to London with solid experience competing in the 2009 World Championships. In all, he had a strong season of improvement during the Olympic year. Betts came out strong in his opening bout against Katani Graham of Micronesia. Betts ignited the passions of the crowd when he hit a beautiful five-point arcing throw in the first period, then took the second period as well for a 6-0, 1-0 win. His second match featured 2010 world silver medalist Pablo Shorey of Cuba. Betts and Shorey were even up in 2012 competition, having split a pair of matches with each other during the year. It was Shorey's turn this time as he scored a close 1-0-1-0 victory over Betts to advance to the next round. In the quarterfinals, Shorey was pinned by Poland's powerful world silver medalist Damian Janikowski, effectively knocking Betts out of the tournament. He finished ninth in the team standings. Not one regret in my entire career up to this point. You know, I'm happy to be here. It's it's as mind blowing as everyone says it is. You know, it's it's such an experience and something that, without a doubt, it's going to be with me my entire life. You know, and and I'm really happy about that. Well, day two also featured an exciting set of three finals. The heavyweights got things going and leading the way. Cuba's superstar Mijan Lopez, who won his second Olympic gold medal with a 2-0-1-0 victory over 2006 world champion Heike Nabi of Estonia. With four world titles, Lopez is one of the world's greatest Greco-Roman stars ever. Iran added a second Olympic gold when 2011 world champion Ahmed Noruzi defeated Georgian Ravez Lashki in the 132-pound finals by a 1-0-1-0 margin. The 185-pound title went to Russia and 2009 world silver medalist Alan Kagaev. He defeated 2004 Olympic champion Karen Gabriel of Egypt in the finals 1-0-1-0. Well, the third day of action was the final day of hope for the U.S. Greco-Roman team, featuring a top American medal hopeful. Two-time world bronze medalist Justin Lester weighed in and did so at 145 pounds. Lester, with both talent and experience, came in with momentum. Lester opened by controlling Sutomo Fujimura of Japan on the way to an impressive 3-0-3-1 victory. Next for Lester, quarterfinals against veteran Hungarian star Tomas Lorenz. Lester opened with a 2-0 first period win, but dropped the second period 1-0. In the deciding third period, it was Lorenz who was able to score two points and emerged the winner. When Lawrence reached the championship finals, Lester was pulled back into the repechage rounds, allowing one more opportunity. Needing two wins to get the bronze medal, Lester would face and need to beat Frank Stabler of Germany. Stabler got his offense going and defeated Lester by a 5-0-5-0 score. In the end, Lester finished eighth. It's a great experience. It's the Olympics. It's the biggest tournament of, the, you know, of your career. You know, and uh, just couldn't put it together today. I tried from the first first match. I knew things were a little sluggish then. Um, just wasn't my normal self today. And you know, waking up this morning, I got in a nice little run in this morning. And I felt good, but as soon as I stepped on the mat, just put, couldn't put things together. Well, at the end of Greco-Roman competition, the U.S. finished with no medals. National coach Steve Fraser assessed the challenging three-day competition. You know, we're very disappointed because, uh, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in our Greco-Roman program in the United States. And uh, we've proved that we can compete with the best in the world. But um, we haven't proved it lately. So, you know, we have, to, we have to go back to the drawing board and really sit down and... and uh, talk about some things, you know, program-wise and coaching-wise and 
athlete-wise, development-wise, and figure out what we need to do to uh, to get back on top. We can we can get there. I'm totally confident, 100. percent But we got to start doing it. More from London when we return. This is USA Wrestling Weekly. has been there. They've been the lifeblood of, uh, of the sport. Uh, it's been a long time and they've been at the top of the game every year forever and I'll tell you what, now that I think about it, maybe that's where I've gotten my inspiration because uh, you know, I, I always want to be in the top of my game in wrestling and I think that's where ASICS is and wants to be as well. who you are, whether you will lead or follow, whether you will fight or give in, whether you will win or lose, and what you will count as your victory. Well, FILA hosted its annual Hall of Fame banquet prior to the Olympic Games, honoring a number of international wrestling greats for their achievements. The ceremony was held downtown London near St. Paul's Cathedral at the Grange St. Paul Hotel. It was a night of stars with many of the world's great wrestling leaders sharing dinner and some entertainment from an amazing pair of performing jugglers. U.S. World and Olympic champion Dan Gable was one of those honored. He was inducted into the Legends category, which only has two other members, Dr. Jabba Hegedush from Hungary and Ivan Yurigan from Russia. Now, many fans from America and from USA Wrestling were there to honor Gable on his special night. Gable visited with them during the social hour and posed for photos. Joining the great one, his wife Kathy and his beautiful daughter Mackenzie. A world champion in 1971, Gable went on to Munich, West Germany to become the 1972 Olympic champion in freestyle at 149 pounds. Gable won gold without allowing one point the entire tournament. Gable also led several U.S. World and Olympic freestyle teams from 1980 to 2000. He was head coach of the 1984 U.S. Olympic freestyle team in Los Angeles, California, which won nine total medals, seven of which were gold. He also coached the 2000 and 1980 U.S. Olympic freestyle teams. Gable had a celebrated career as he coached the University of Iowa to 15 NCAA team titles from 1977 through 1997. After the ceremony, many of the other honorees wanted to have their pictures taken with Gable, one of the sport's true heroes. That night, Gable became the seventh FIFA Hall of Fame inductee from the U.S., joining freestyle wrestlers John Smith, Bruce Baumgartner, Kevin Jackson, and Lee Kemp, women star Tricia Saunders, and Olympic referee Dr. Vince Waro. Dan Gable talked to us about the induction into the FIFA Hall of Fame. This award is a uh, pretty highly uh, reputable award, so uh, anytime you go into Hall of Fames, uh, it's always good, but when you go into the one that uh, is in the top of your sport, uh, it's, it's pretty impressive. Among the honorees was 2000 Olympic champion and 1999 World Freestyle champ Daniel Igali of Canada. Igali was the first African-born black wrestler to win Olympic gold and is now a coach in his native Nigeria. All my coaches, um, a lot of my training partners are here to, to celebrate this special evening. My wife and, and kids and, and my colleagues from Nigeria are all here too. It's, it's a big night for me. 
There was a decided Canadian flavor among the honorees. Joining a gala was longtime Canadian referee and FILA vice president Mario Saltnig in the leadership category. Daniel Robin, who lived and coached in Canada after winning Olympic medals for France in both styles, is now serving as competition director for the 2012 London Olympics. Other inductees this year include four-time world champion Gundren Hoy of Norway in women's freestyle, 1992 Olympic champion and three-time world champion Natsikarian of Russia in Greco-Roman. And in abstentia, longtime FILA referee and sports leader Aldo Albanese of Italy, the Italian Federation graciously accepted on his behalf. He would receive his honor among the other international stars. It was fitting and right that the Olympic Games would serve as the setting to honor wrestling's greats and one of our own, a true legend and champion in Dan Gable. Well, last week we traveled with and shared the experiences of the U.S. Women's Olympic team in their French training camp. This week it's Belarus for a peak of the men's freestyle training camp thanks to U.S. team chiropractor Dr. Fred Roberto of Maximize Living. Dr. Roberto joined the U.S. team in Belarus prior to the competition week. He visited with legendary coach Bobby Douglas. I think they're, they're trying to wrap up their training. The conditioning part's over, which is always the toughest part. Uh, technically, we're, we're working out some kinks. Uh, I, I think this is a, a team that has a, a, a big future. Uh, hopefully, uh, the future will start from in London. Coach Sean Bormet talked about Olympian Jake Herbert. We've had a good acclimation week. We're starting to get to the tail end of it. Uh, training has been really good. Their bodies are adjusting the time changes, getting their legs back under them, uh, pushing through this early part of the week. Olympic champion Cale Sanderson has coached Jake Varner in college and internationally. Training's going good. Uh, Coach Jones has a great plan for these guys. You know, this has been a, a nice training facility, as you can see, a lot of space and a lot of tr uh, workout partners. We brought a lot of guys over here just to uh, um, you know, keep these guys company, make sure they have everything they need and they're comfortable and that they're ready to go have a good time in London. Lou Roselli coaches Olympic heavyweight Travel Delagnev at the Ohio Regional Training Center and he provides his insight. I think that the you know, team's looking really good. You know, guys are dialing in right now, getting ready for uh, the competition to start. Uh, Travel is uh, obviously one of uh, the guys that trains at Ohio State. He's looking good, you know, he's got uh, great movement and I'm, I'm excited for him to start competing and uh, getting after it. Well, the freestyle team headed back to London one week prior to the first match. National freestyle coach Zeke Jones had a media day at one of the practices inviting the international press to meet the freestyle team. Interested reporters and television journalists came out in large numbers and sent stories about our freestyle Olympians to their papers and stations around the world. Now, when this show was produced, the U.S. women's freestyle team was about to start its Olympic competition. The first two women wrestlers, Clarissa Chun at 105 pounds and Elena Periskova at 138 pounds, had already weighed in. The two-day women's event is scheduled for August 8th and 9th. National women's coach Terry Steiner talked to us about the team on the night before competition. I think everyone's ready for the tournament to be here, so, so you know, uh, we're excited. I mean, if you can't get up for the Olympic Games, then <laughs> it's time to get out of the sport, right? right. So it's, it's a great event. It's great to be here. It's great to be a part of it. It's going to be great tomorrow uh, watching these athletes uh, do their job, um, and they're ready to go. They've worked hard. They've earned um, everything they get, so uh, we, we wish them the best tomorrow. As we produced this program, USA Wrestling had some major media coverage over there in England on one of the world's most popular television shows. The NBC Today show anchors Matt Lauer and Al Roker select one sport to try during every Olympic game. They go through training, then test themselves in that Olympic sport. In the London Olympics, the sport they selected was Greco-Roman wrestling. USA Wrestling Weekly was able to get some pictures of this feature during production. Olympic wrestlers Dramil Byers and Ellis Coleman, along with National Greco-Roman coach Steve Frazier, spent time with both Lauer and Roker in the wrestling room working out. Byers and Coleman demonstrated some of their best techniques on the NBC celebrities, giving them a true taste of how tough the sport can be. It was quite a learning experience for both Matt and Alan. They had fun getting to know Dramil. Ellis and Steve during the training session. Later in the week, Lauer and Roker got up on the actual Olympic mats in the Excel Center in London for a match of their own. This was all shown on the air during the Today Show, Wednesday, August 8th. All of us at USA Wrestling thank the Today Show and its producers for choosing to feature Greco-Roman wrestling. Well, one of the heartwarming stories from this year's Olympics was the kindness shown by a Florida community in helping a young wrestler who's battling with cancer. 
19-year-old Blake Chandler of Spring Hill, Florida, was diagnosed with a form of bone cancer, which led to the loss of a leg. Thanks to the Children's Dream Fund, a nonprofit organization in West Central Florida, as well as support from USA Wrestling, Blake Chandler was granted a wish to watch the wrestling competition at the 2012 Summer Olympics in London. A community celebration was held for Blake and his family in Florida just prior to his departure for Great Britain. Funds were raised for them to cover the cost of travel, lodging, and airfare, plus Olympic wrestling tickets to see the three days of Greco-Roman action. Well, Blake saw the nation's best wrestlers work out, and he met one of his heroes on the U.S. freestyle team, Florida native and Olympian Jared Freyer. We talked with Blake and his family about their amazing journey. The, the experience is uh, it's, uh, unexplainable. It's, um, it's kind of definitely, definitely amazing and that everybody came here to help me get here and watch everything that's going on and get me into the training facility and meet people and everything. It's awesome. More from London when we return. This is USA Wrestling Weekly. Each season, Liberty Mutual's Responsible Sports Community Grant Program awards $65,000 to youth sports organizations and school sports programs that demonstrate their commitment to responsibility in youth sports. Your organization could be one of our 20 winners this season. It's easy. Simply visit ResponsibleSports.com and click on the Community Grant Program. Administrators register their organization with the program, then reach out to rally parents, coaches, and team supporters to log on and review either the Responsible Sports Parenting or Responsible Coaching Guide. Then complete the quiz and showcase your mastery of the concepts. Every successfully passed quiz is worth a point that you can credit to your favorite youth sports organization or school sports program. Connect with friends, family, and neighbors to rally more support. The teams and schools with the most points at the end of the grant period win. It's that simple. Watch the leaderboard throughout the grant season, then rally more of your supporters to increase your totals. Liberty Mutual is committed to celebrating and championing youth sports and to financially supporting organizations that demonstrate their commitment to responsible sports. Join the movement and start earning points toward your community grant. Well, the U.S. has a storied Olympic history, and many of the nation's legendary wrestlers showed up to support Team USA at the Games. Three of America's Olympic wrestling champions were in London as part of the delegation. Brandon Slay won Olympic gold in freestyle at the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney. He's an assistant national freestyle coach for USA Wrestling and is helping coach the U.S. team in London. During this training camp, one of the big things is, is for us to kind of get in a place that's peaceful, where we can really focus on on the specific techniques that each guy needs. You know, we're blessed to have a lot of personal coaches over here working with the team. Kenny Monday was one of the superstars of American wrestling. He won a 1988 Olympic gold medal in freestyle in Seoul, Korea, and an Olympic silver medal at the 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona, Spain. He also competed in the 96 Atlanta Games. Kenny was a 1989 world champion as well. We spoke with Kenny in London. You know, it was funny, I was walking down the street the other day and yeah. I got this flashback, you know, I'm like, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, and I got the jitters, you know, and I'm like, I was, this is the first time not competing in the Olympics and being around it, so I was, I was getting nervous like I, was, I had to compete. <laughs> well, Kendall Cross competed in two Olympic Games in men's freestyle. He won Olympic gold at the 96 Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia, and was also a member of the 92 U.S. Olympic team in Barcelona, Spain. Kendall spent some time with us at a freestyle practice. It's the Olympics. Um, I feel it. You know, so much energy in the air. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited for the guys. You know, I think the biggest thing right now is that they're healthy and that they're calm and, um, you know, prepared to, uh, to go in and, and do what they can do. Well, as part of our continuing Olympic coverage, we visited with a number of U.S. wrestling people who played a role in the games. Tim Johnson is one of the top wrestling television announcers in our country and has been involved in the sport for decades now as an athlete, coach, and administrator. At the London Olympics, he was part of the broadcast production team for the Olympic Broadcast Service, which provides the video feed for the entire world from the venue. 
Well, I'm the coordinator on the floor for the uh, OBS, and I make sure that the athletes get to the mat um, and coordinate it with the TV so that they know when the athletes are ready. I tell, I release the athletes to go to the mat, and so that's basically my job, to coordinate the competition on the floor. Chris Rogers is a wrestling coach from New Jersey and an avid wrestling fan. He was included on the volunteer wrestling venue staff at the Excel Center in London, helping provide support for the London Olympic Committee for the Games. I got involved when USA Wrestling sent me an email because of silver, being a silver level coach. I applied, went through the process, looking to help out, learn more about the Olympic style so I can teach it to the girls and boys back home. Well, there are still three days of live action remaining from London as the men's freestyle team will hit the mats August 10th through the 12th. Fans, you can follow the action a number of different ways. NBCOlympics.com is providing a live video stream of the entire Olympic wrestling competition, along with every other sports event as well at the Olympic Games. Wrestling is also scheduled to appear on the NBC television coverage with segments on MSNBC, NBC Sports Network, and on selected occasions, the NBC coverage of the Olympic Games itself. For the most updated coverage of the U.S. Olympic wrestlers on the internet, visit themat.com, its video portal, themat.tv, and USA Wrestling social media, including Facebook and Twitter. Well, next week, our Olympic coverage continues with women's and men's freestyle, and we'll take a special look inside and behind the scenes from the 2012 London Olympic Games. Until then, from the studios of USA Wrestling Weekly, I'm Scott Casper. Good night.